Hi, in this video, we'll be learning how to build a marketplace on WordPress and the Docker plugin. So if this is something you'd like to learn how to do, then watch this video. Okay, so first you'll need a WordPress website. So if you need help with setting one up, then I'll link a video now, which goes over setting up a WordPress website. So once you have just a basic WordPress website or an existing one that you're looking to turn into a marketplace, what we're first going to do is download the Docker plugin. So we're going to go to plugins and then add new. And then we're going to search for Docker. And then this one right here, Dockin Best WooCommerce Multi Vendor Marketplace Solution. So we're going to use this one to build our market marketplace website. So click Install Now. Okay, and then click Activate. So they make it easy by providing a setup wizard. So we're just going to follow the setup wizard that they provide. So let's click Let's Go. Okay, and then let's go again. Okay, great. So let's just call our store. Applet Media Marketplace. Shipping fees will go to the vendor. Access the vendor and then just Google Maps. So You'll need to get an API key to do maps, but we'll skip that for now. Okay, and then click continue. Okay, so this means allowing new vendors to start selling. So right now it's off. So by default, maybe you should approve the vendor first. So. I would recommend just keeping this off if you're a small marketplace. But if you're more, as you get larger, then you would have to turn this on, I would think, because you would have so many um, new vendors registering that it might just be easier to allow them to sell first and just monitor the account. So we're just going to leave this off for now. And then the percentage. The commission type, so because you're the owner of the marketplace, you can get a percentage of all sales. So it's just going to be 10%. Then vendor can change the order status. So we'll just keep that as off, as in the default here. Okay, and click continue. Okay, and then the withdraw. So these would be the payment method. So when your vendor reaches a certain threshold in their account, that you'll allow them to withdraw. So the minimum they have set is 50. And then the order status for withdrawals is completed. So we'll just keep it at the defaults, what they have right here. Yep, so we'll just keep PayPal for, for the time being. Okay, and then the recommended plugins. Okay, so they have WooCommerce conversion tracking. Let's just remove these all for now because we don't need any SMS notifications or any kind of email marketing solutions. So we're just looking to install Dockin for our marketplace. Okay, great, so our marketplace is now ready. So let's go to the Dockin dashboard. Let's see what they have available. Okay, so this is the dashboard which allows you and I see the sales of all your vendors. And then again here, how we have vendor awaiting approval. Okay, so next we're going to set the store list page as the home page. So to do that, you want to go to reading. And then home page, static page. And it's going to be store list here. And click save changes. Okay, so now if we go to visit site. This is the home page. So it's showing all of our vendors. So first we need to make a vendor. Let's go to dashboard and then back to dock in and then vendors. Okay, so we have, I think it's me. Yep, so just go to approve vendors and we have the set as pending, which I recommend just so you're able to monitor the people that are signing up for your marketplace in the beginning. Okay, and let's just click edit. Let's see here. 
Yeah, so Docker options here. So the store name is just Sean store. And then you can upload like a banner here. So let's just let's see what's available here. Okay, so we'll just use this image for now. Okay, and then click update. Okay, so now we, if we check the home page again, great. So now we have the Sean store here. Let me click. Go back into vendors now, and then we're going to add some products. So go to products. Okay, so let's just create a product for this store. Okay, so let's just do test product. And just add a image and then we'll just do one hundred dollars. Okay, and then publish. Okay, so let's just go to vendor and then add new vendor. Okay, so we're just gonna do Bob Bob's shop. Okay, and then just an email and a username. So let's use my Gmail and then username Bob's shop. Bob shop. Okay, click next. And then the address. So I think we can skip that for now. And then this is just the payment options. I think you're able skip this for now until you have like the withdrawal limit okay and then enable selling already and allow them to publish their listings directly and let's just make them a featured vendor okay, great so now we have another vendor let's just be the front end of the website great so now we have bob shop and we have sean shop Okay, so next I believe we need to set up WooCommerce here just to make the site work. So again, with WooCommerce, you just want to set up your store. So just go through their wizard again. So let's just fill this all out. Canada and just click next. So industry is just going to be yeah, fashion and apparel. And then physical products. Okay, so it's gonna be a big store. No, and then continue. And then we don't need this because we're just using the docking plugin and then click continue okay so now we have our shop here so now this is working let's go back to our marketplace okay so we there was just a there just seems to be a bug so just make sure that you set the static pages as a different page other than store list and the post page as another page like sample page and then click save changes and then if we go back to the website then we should be able to see our individual store pages so you see here we have sean store and then his products here default layout is not very nice which they provide so maybe we can look for a different theme so we're going to go to appearances and theme and then we're going to pick just a theme for e-commerce so just search docking Yeah, this one here looks nice. This one, e-commerce solution. And click activate. Okay, so the theme is now activated. Let's check out the front end again. Let's go to stores. Yeah, so this looks a lot better. So let's go to Sean's store. And it's still this layout, so let's just try to change that. But I do like how they have this set up now. They even have the My Accounts pages, your vendor dashboard here. 
So this is where you would uh, go to list your products and make your order. So this is part of the docking plugin. So as a vendor, you would look through here. Your, all your orders would come through here. This is where you would withdraw. And let's see right here, it says minimum $50. And this is your setting for the, your store. This is your store settings here. And then your payment settings here. So you can add PayPal there. So again, let's go to settings and appearances. Let's try this one here. Let's try this one here and click save changes. Okay, so that should be activated now. So go to stores. Okay, yeah, so this looks a lot better now. So let's see actually if we can make the store page as the front page because I really like that for the home page. So click save changes here and then go back to site. Okay, yeah, so now this is working. So it must have been with the post page. So this is great. Okay, great, so we have the marketplace website and the store list. So next, let's just... Um, learn how to create a vendor say if i was a user registering so let's just log out okay yeah so here we are so we can we have our login here and then our register here let's just register it's the same process that we did before so let's just be a customer this time and then click register okay so i just need a different email so let's just put one there Password. And then click register. Okay, great. So now I have an account here and then I can go shopping. So I can go to John store and then I can buy this product. So the cart here and then you would just check out. Okay, so that's how the process would be like as a customer of your marketplace. Okay, so to finish off, let's just go over the different modules that they provide. So these are available for like the pro version. So they seem to have like live chat here, just different kind of integrations with like Elementor and bookings. So Dokken is very good because you can, it comes with many, many other modules that you can add to it. See even here like Stripe, but again, if I want to use this, then I have to go to the Pro plan. So these are the Pro features here. So right now we're just on the light version. So the dock and light is good just to start out and get your feet wet with having a marketplace. But once you see traction, then I would recommend jumping to the Pro version. So again, just to finish off, let's just go over the dashboard as the admin. So here is where you can see kind of all the analytics of your marketplace. Okay, and this is where you can see people withdrawing. So any kind of reverse withdrawals. So if there's any refunds. Okay, and these are your vendors again, and then your settings here. So again, just having a privacy policy, I'd recommend, and a terms and conditions page. So you can just get that from um, either having a lawyer write it up or just use a template online. Okay, so reverse withdrawal settings come in. This is just for commissions from vendors on cash on delivery orders. So, okay, so this is something if you want to recommend is cash on delivery. So I don't want to use cash on delivery at the moment. I just would rather um, have them pay directly click save changes and just have the standard uh selling options for now okay so yeah so just make sure here in woocommerce that you also set up a payment here so as all the payments would be going directly to you so you wouldn't need to handle any shipping because that would be handled by the vendor so payments would be made to you so make sure you install one of these 
So we'll just go with the WooCommerce payment. And then by setting this up, you just need to connect your bank account. So this is also something you need to do in order to allow transactions to be made on your website. Okay, so I'll just go back for now, but you can set this up if you're looking, if you're creating a real marketplace. Okay, so we have a fully functioning marketplace application where you're able to accept vendors and those vendors can create products and customers are able to log in and purchase products from other vendors. This concludes the end of the video. I hope you were able to create a marketplace app using this tutorial. If you'd like more professional help, then you can click the link in the description to work with my agency, Maplet Media. Please like and subscribe for more content like this, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks.